met with Martin in Albany. I met with him. Other people met. We were sitting on the grass. It was warm one, in e one evening where we were talking about the uh, concept of how to keep the demonstrations going and what kind of imagery did you want to project. His position was that you needed a leader, you know, and that people had to organize to project the leader. Now, that maybe some of that may have come out of his experience as a Baptist minister. I don't know. I don't know where it came from. But our position was, and I recall this directly, and I would not say anything that's, tell you anything that's not true. We tried to disagree with him and point out to him that what you had to do was to create a lot of leaders as possible so that if once somebody was assassinated, that the movement could keep on going and that the movement would not just be based upon the... Uh, uh, grievances around the assassination or the horror of the assassination. Now, he didn't agree with that, you know. I mean, but we tried, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I personally know that I'm in Albany, Georgia, that we had this discussion with him and we had the discussions elsewhere too. And I think it's a very important point about the civil rights movement in the United States of America, how there was conflict over the question of what type of leadership should you have, and that we as we were trying, and we explained this to him, trying to develop leaders all across the South, you know, so that if something happened to any one of us, that the movement would continue, you know, it would be not dependent upon just the leader. Now, in Selma, Alabama, we had, I had this discussion, or rather, um, yeah, in Selma, you know, we had this discussion again with him, and he was a personal friend of mine, I had a lot of respect for him, but the question of, you know, what kind of organization you know, where you're going to build, and that, and that the impression uh, just recently, you know, that the, I heard some program, maybe it was even on television, you know, that this question about Martin being criticized or, or something in, in, in Albany, but that's, you know, that Claude Sitton of the New York Times point out that for the first time in the history of the movement that there have been criticisms of Martin. You know, but our position to him was this question around the question of leadership. You know, I mean, like, what kind of organization do you want to build? Do you want to build an organization where you have the leader and everybody leads, can't moves with the leader and so forth and so on? Or do you want to try to develop a, multi, a diversified leadership? You know, Robert Williams was up in Monroe, North Carolina. John McFerrin was there in... Uh, uh, Fayette County, Tennessee, and we explained how we were trying to help those forces who were emerging as leaders. And uh, so I think it's that would be my mm -hmm. reaction to any comment around Albany is that, one, we had people in place. They had shifted their uh, 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 voter registration emphasis to include direct action because they felt that the shackles of fear were so strong that you needed some type of demonstrations, you know, against protest movements. Tell me your your. Um, Does this make sense to you? Absolutely right? makes sense to me. I mean, tell, I mean the whole okay. this whole uh, idea of which is still something I think that the African American community grapples with today. That some leader is going to come along and save everybody, and that that means that nobody has an obligation in the meantime <laughs> to do anything because <laughs> they're all sitting here waiting for a savior to yeah. show up. You know. Um, it, it's it's a it's a fundamental issue I think that that um, has not gone away at all. I wanted to get your impressions of you. Uh, what what was your impression of of Martin Luther King as a man? Well, I have a lot of respect for Martin. I mean that the and I still have you know and, and he's he's been murdered. I mean I have probably much more respect for him and that the. Uh, uh, you know we work with him and that you know we try to work with his organization. And, his organization called the uh, Conference uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina, out of which the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee was formed. Um, the uh, I don't have any disrespect for him. I mean, but this concept of of what type of organization did you build? Do you want to build, or do you want to work in? You know, was fundamental question. Uh, but I think that the see my own involvement. A lot of it has to do with an intensive study of Gandhi as a graduate student at the at the uh, university at Boston University, as well as um, I forget his name right now, but wrote a book called Moral Man and the Immoral Society. 
And it's a very important point. I mean, that the uh, where, um, I forget the name of the author right now, but it'll come to me in a minute. But the uh, he taught at the uh, Theological Seminary in New York, and that the idea of in order to he was this author was pointing out um, what an impact the Southern student movement or the Southern Negroes in the South or Black people in the South could have if there were demonstrations based on the Gandhi pattern in South Africa. But he was also raising the question of consistency, that is, moral man and immoral society. You know, that you can have, you have an immoral society and you need people with morality to try to help break those things down. And I think that's very true. I mean, what it means is that in order to keep consistency, that you can't do one thing and say another thing. I mean, that's the immorality of what this particular author was raising. And that so you have, you know, we attempted to try to build on the concept of moral man and an immoral society. And the immoral society exists, you know, but you need morality in the people who are trying to change those conditions.